Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode, and today is another uh, episode where we're going to do the monthly uh, die cat, local diecast meat haul kind of thing. I didn't pick up a lot of stuff this time around, but I did get some pretty cool items and we're going to go through them. Um, we're also going to go, I, I kind of showed this in the last uh, weekly episode. Uh, these Corvettes right here. Still don't know really much about them. I'm not really sure how many were made. I just don't know. Uh, but we're going to open them. I'm going to get them open. Uh, so we're going to take a look at those in the second segment. They're a Premium Hobbies exclusive. I have no idea who Premium Hobbies is. If you're watching this video, Premium Hobbies, please identify yourself. I have no idea. I actually even contacted uh, Chad at Auto World about these. And he said he'd have to get back to me. So he wasn't even, you know, right off the top of his head familiar exactly with uh, who these, uh, or how many were made or anything like that. I mean, he knows they're obviously, they're a hobby exclusive item and all that. But uh, they do a lot of hobby exclusive stuff. And I was excited for it just because it's not a square body. I love the square body stuff, definitely. Uh, but it is nice to see, you know, a different casting. So really, really cool. We're going to take a look at those so <clears throat> in more auto world news at the meet i picked up an older uh auto world car shout out to that van guy uh he had this at his table and i went ahead and grabbed it it's an older auto world and um it's just a beautiful release of this dodge dart phoenix in blue i have it of course but uh you know whatever i'm kind of low-key almost going after a second auto world set carded is that nutty uh it might be uh but uh anyway i don't think i had another carded example a carded example of this i have it loose so i'm not going to do it like carded like the ultra reds won't be included in that but um I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. So whatever. Uh, and then I snagged and I say ultra red's not going to be included, but I did pick up a duplicate ultra red. I already have this Supra. So whatever. I snagged another one. The price was right. I couldn't let it go. It's just the way I am. So obviously we're not going to open up these two items because I already have them loose. Um, now another ultra red though, that you may think I already have loose, but I didn't is this one. Shout out to my buddy Donovan. Uh, he hooked me up with a pretty good deal on this one, I think. Um, this one's tough to find, but unless you're a complete Auto World nerd, you wouldn't know that. Um, you see this Hennessy Camaro come up quite often uh, on eBay and stuff like that, so it doesn't seem like it would be one that's very difficult to find. However, there are, from what I know, at minimum, there's three different variations of this Ultra Red. And they're very minor, and I'll go through it in the second half of the video. I'll show you. And there might actually be four variations of this Ultra Red. I haven't seen the fourth ever. I don't know for sure if it's out there, but logic will tell you that it might be, and it probably is. Um, I'll explain that in more detail. Whatever. We'll talk about the mystery of this casting, okay, in uh, the next segment of the video. So stay tuned for that. That should, you guys should find it interesting. I don't know. I'm going to nerd out on you though for a minute. Um, and then let's see what else. Uh, my buddy Shresh picked up a couple of Johnny lightnings for me that I needed. So thank you very much, buddy for that. And then my buddy Dustin, uh, also picked up a Johnny lightning, uh, for me, which is this one that I was missing the white Camaro. Oh, which FYI, this casting is the same as, as that. So there's that, which makes this even more interesting. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to open up these. We're going to open up that ultra red. We've got two ultra reds so far. We're going to be opening up. Um, and then I picked up just this firebird, this premier collection firebird. I honestly don't know if I have it for sure, but I'm not even going to bother looking. We're just going to open it. Uh, from another person that was there selling stuff. And then the remainder of this stuff I picked up from my buddies SC Diecast, Scott and Lindsay Cleveland. Um, there you go right there. 
that's them. They opened up a brand new uh, retail location in Sheboygan Falls, Wisconsin. If you're in the area, definitely check it out. Otherwise, of course, you can find them on their eBay store, at Oldies Junkie 77, um, or on their Facebook page for SC Diecast. Anyway, good people. Um, he's been around the diecast business for very long. It's kind of cool to hear some stories. You know, he knows pretty much all the hobby dealers that are that are players. You know, nowadays still. So it's kind of fun. Anyway, they're getting kind of back into it. Uh, so hit them up for pretty much, you know, whatever green light needs. They do a lot of green light. They do some Hot Wheels stuff. Um, you know, if you're going to message them and tell them that, hey, I sent you there, don't just don't do it on eBay because you can get in trouble for that kind of stuff. Just uh, message them on Facebook. You can buy from them on Facebook and from on eBay. So anyway, good people, SC Diecast. Um, we'll see some more stuff from them, uh, as time goes on as well. He, uh, hooked me up with some green light and just gave it to me, um, to show you. And so we've got this Mercury Cougar. Uh, this is from the running on empty series, the latest running on empty series in golf livery. I know I've been kind of sick of golf, but man, this thing looks awesome. And then we've got this from, I believe this is the anniversary collection. We got a 1991 GMC Sonoma with a 1920 Indian Scout. That's very cool. So we'll check that one out. And then we got a Ford Cosworth, which of course is a great casting from Greenlight. You know, this is from the latest running on empty set. And then we got this from, I think it's from one of the later latest Geo Muscle sets. Series 25, this is a 1981 Ford Mustang Cobra. So I got those from him, and then I purchased a uh, set of modern classics, so the latest car culture set. Uh, we will see these. I'm going to actually make a separate video on these, as like I do with, with you know, a lot of car culture. Uh, this is definitely a hot set, no doubt. Uh, I mean, we got a brand new casting for sure. Actually, is it two brand new castings? I know the 3000 GT is brand new. Is the Lancer brand new? I think it is, right? Copyright date 2020. Yeah, so Lancer's a brand new casting. We got the Honda Prelude first time in premium. We got the Nissan 300ZX Twin Turbo. I think this is the first time this has been in premium as well. And then this BMW M3, which is not the first time this has been in premium, but still a pretty cool release. So a very hot set of of those some really nice cars in that car culture set very very cool uh we're not going to open up those in the next segment so i'm sorry about that but we will do i will do a separate video on those we might as well do their own little 10 minute 15 minute video and um we'll do that so let's go ahead and flip the camera around i'm going to show you this this stuff yeah you know this isn't going to be too long of a video right probably not i don't know if you guys clicked on it you already know how long it is uh but yeah so keep her tuned all right, guys, so let's start this uh, second segment of the video uh, with this Auto World, I think, and then we're going to go into the green light, the other stuff I've got, and then we'll wrap it back around to Auto World. Uh, you should definitely stay tuned till the end of the video so I can, you know, nerd out on you and the explanation of that Hennessy Camaro. I, I hope you guys, uh, I don't know, find it interesting. And uh, yeah, anyway, then we're going to start with this Corvette. Again, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. The reason why I don't is because, okay, we see it's premium hobbies. That's cool. Uh, we see some Corvette facts here. This is kind of a, you know, standard fare, right? Um, there's no, like, version A or version B. I believe this is the only uh, version of the regular one before we get to the chase. Uh, one odd thing about it is there is no production number listed on the front of it, which is, it's different for a hobby release, right? Normally, you'd see some sort of production number on there. The other thing that's odd about this is premium hobbies. Who are premium? Who, who are, who, who, who is that? I don't know who that is. Um, and the only thing we get on the back of the card is premium hobbies and a logo. We don't, there's no reference to a website. There's no reference to a Facebook besides an auto world fans at Auto World Fans Facebook page, at Auto World Diecast Instagram, which is a round two uh, Facebook page and Instagram page, uh, not a premium hobbies. Um, the only place I've seen these online, I've seen them on eBay, and that's it. 
So I honestly don't know what's going on. This is still a mystery uh, to me. And hopefully, you know, I'll find out some answers uh, soon enough. And if I do, you know, maybe I'll share them with you or, or something. We'll see what happens. Now, I do see that the production code on this, too, is from August of 2021. So these were made quite a while ago. I'm guessing they may have gotten held up coming over here uh, from overseas. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. I, all I know is saw these on eBay, saw this on eBay first, and I was like, what is that? And bought one right away because they were very reasonably priced. And then I shared the link uh, to this car on the Facebook group, Auto World, uh, the Auto World Collectors Facebook group. Um, which I definitely recommend anybody who enjoys Auto World to join, obviously, because, you know, if I find out inside information or any information about something that's uh, being sold that I think uh, the members would take advantage of, I share it there, and so does, and so does the other members. So, um, these sold out right after I basically shared the eBay link, then they were gone. Um, so there's that. So, again, I'm not sure. Uh, if any of you guys knows in the comments down below, maybe Mike knows, uh, Groot Hoist. Um, but yeah, check that out. All right. So let's go ahead and get into this one. Uh, let's go ahead and open it up. I mean, this has almost gotten to the point where I was like questioning the legitimacy of this release like what happened here just don't know it's just weird that they don't have a website or anything like that or is this a release that they were gonna do and then it was supposed to get can I, I just don't know anything about it and hopefully i'll learn something here so it's we've seen it in black before this corvette but this is in a matte finish and it looks actually quite awesome in this just matte black very mean very menacing uh looking very, very cool. Oh, are we going to get some, maybe we'll get some information from the back here. What is that on the plate? I see VRC. I got to get a better camera, guys. We're not going to get a good look at that. Let me see if I can actually see it with my naked eye here. And sorry about this. Take a look at that for just a second. Well, I'm taking a peek. Actually, it might even be easier to look at it on the red. We'll see. Uh, so it's VRC something. Maybe it says VRC diecast. I don't know. Well, I'll have to look into that uh, based on that. But, uh, but yeah, it's what we're used to. It's the new Corvette C8 casting. Essentially, this is the second release of it we've seen. Um, it's only had one store release so far. It looks really good. It looks really, actually, really good. I like it a lot better than I thought I would in this kind of, like, matte finish black. And then, of course, we got the Ultra Red. And from this, we can tell from the outside, we got an Ultra Red base. We got white tires and an Ultra Red body. Um, I don't... Oh, and it's got... Well, no, there's red seats in this one, too. Um, so, it looks stunning on this blue packaging. And we are going to go ahead and uh, just rip her open here. And pop that out. And yeah, that looks really good. I normally am not a huge fan of the white tires, but man, on this model, I gotta say, it it's looking good. I think it's looking good. What do you guys think? Very, very cool. Just a stunning model. It looks so awesome. Can we see this any any better here? It's just it's VRC something. You know, maybe I'm just mistaken for not knowing who this is, but I don't know. It'd be nice to at least know the production number of it. I'm guessing it's going to be, you know, what would it be? Uh, I don't even know if I want to speculate. But, uh, yeah, it's probably somewhere in the 2000 range is my guess. Maximum, I think, would be like, what, 4800 or something like that. And I think would be the max that I would guess that this would be produced in. Not the red, the, the regular. Uh, but I'm guessing this Ultra Red's pretty rare, and it's going to be a tough one to get down the line if you are trying to get it. 
So definitely not going to be as popular as a square body, but it is a Corvette C8, and uh, they are pretty pretty popular. So yeah, very cool. And again, we get you know you do have the opening uh, rear hatch engine compartment thing. I'm not actually going to open it right now because I just don't want to dig it out and open it, and it's shut so perfectly right now. I just it's not worth it to me to open it, even though I'm sure it works and all that stuff. But we're going to leave her shut. All right, so there's that. There's that. Let's go ahead and just stick with the round two for a second. Let's open up a couple of Johnny Lightnings. We got this guy right here, uh, 7418. I opened up the version B of this car already on the channel. Uh, previous Diecast Weekly. I think it might have been actually, well, maybe not the last one, maybe the one before it. I don't remember. But uh, I love this cast thing. This is a great tooling from Johnny Lightning. Just excellent. Of course, metal on metal. I said this in the last time I talked about Johnny Lightning. They are just putting out some amazing stuff lately. They've just been putting out some really cool stuff. It's really sparked my interest again in Johnny Lightning. So we got this one. And then, of course, this is interesting, too, because this is an Auto World Casting in medium, however you pronounce that, poly. First release of our new Johnny Lightning Pontiac Firebird. Well, it's new Johnny Lightning, but it's not new to me because this is an Auto World Deluxe casting that has been converted over to a Johnny Lightning, limited to 7418. Definitely, I think better than the um, the other. They, Johnny Lightning has a version of this Gen uh, Firebird already in their tooling catalog, but they decided to convert this uh, Deluxe model over, and that's what they've been doing with the Deluxe models. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Deluxe line from Auto World, I mean, I would suggest just, I don't know, going back on my Auto World playlist, you'll find some stuff uh, regarding it. But just in general, the Auto World versions, no opening hood, um, plastic base, and sort of generic wheels. Now we get uh, rubber tires, metal base, of course, still no opening feature, uh, but it's nice to see these castings rebirthed in uh in the johnny lightning line and that's not something new for you know the round two brands there's been some shared toolings definitely between racing champions and um johnny lightning in the past and now we're getting some johnny lightning and auto world uh shared toolings it's all coming from auto world into johnny lightning i don't think we'll ever see something in the reverse but who knows you know uh, but this is a very good-looking version of this car. Quite awesome. I think it actually looks better than any of the Auto World releases. It just, I, it's a good-looking car. So, very, very cool. Um, all right, next is, well, let's just stick with the Firebird for a moment. We got a Matchbox. The one lonely little Matchbox from this uh, episode. From the Premier Collection. Uh, I don't know when exactly these came out. Let's take a look and see if I can find a date. 1996 is the copyright date, so we're going to guess somewhere around 1997. Uh, these are limited to 25,000 pieces, which I guess is fairly low considering it's a matchbox. Although, who knows? Uh-oh, kids are downstairs. You're going to hear some background noise. Because uh, I doubt they're going to be quiet which is fine. Um, but yeah, pretty cool version of this Firebird. You can see definitely some scale differences here between the JL, which JL's, you know, castings a lot of the times run a little bit smaller than 164. And some of these Matchbox definitely run larger than 164, even though it says it's 164 in the bottom here. It's definitely not. Well, uh, maybe it is. It's just got like a wide body kind of thing going on to it. But pretty cool. Rubber tires, it's got suspension. And it's got, you know, a typical graphic for the era. Anyway, it's a pretty cool release. It's, you know, it's another one of those castings I sort of collect. You know, when I see versions of it I don't have. And I actually, I don't think I've got this one, so I'm happy to add it to the collection. Very, very cool. All right, moving on from that. Um, let's get into green light real quick. And actually, I'm going to cut here and cut all these packages open so you don't have to see me using scissors constantly. All right, so let's start this uh, green light section here with this Ford Mustang Cobra uh, from GL Muscle Series 25. Fox Body Mustang. Pretty 
cool. Of course, opening hood. You can see the motor down there. Not all GL castings have opening hoods. This one does. Pretty decent basic model there, and uh, definitely pretty cool. So, so yeah, definitely digging that. And then uh, let's see here, what else we got? So, Mustang. This next one is the 1995 Ford Escort RS Cosworth. Great tooling from Greenlight. I absolutely love this tooling. They did a fantastic job on it. I'm going to be hard-pressed not to get every single version of it that comes out. I just like it that much, and it is quite good. So take a look at that. This is from the Running on Empty series. I typically don't buy anything from the Running on Empty series because I'm not a huge fan of the gas station, whatever, or the, whatever logo is all over the cars. But on this particular version, I think it looks quite good. Uh, even down to, like, the headlights having a graphic on them, I think looks pretty cool. Uh, 24... 12 is our serial. What's the serial on the Mustang? Uh, 376 on the Mustang. But this is a really good looking car. It's just weird, and I've mentioned this before, but Greenlight seems to put a lot of really, uh, a lot of effort into some toolings and not a ton of effort into others. It's just, I don't know why or how or what, what the deal is. But it's, you know, for some reason they, they do. They put a lot more effort into some stuff than they do other stuff. Just really, really, really odd how they do that. All right, so moving on from there, we've got, let's see here. Let's do this Gulf liveried uh, Mercury Cougar XR7. This is from the Running on Empty series. Yep, this is also from the Running on Empty. Another one I picked up, again, a series. I usually don't pick up too much stuff. The Gulf, the Gulf stuff looks pretty cool, though, and this Mercury Cougar is a pretty cool casting as well. Uh, we got 6,450. What's on here? Very, very cool. Uh, I don't know. Does this casting have an opening hood? I, yes, it does. All right. There it is. All right, and I have a couple different versions of this tooling already. I was excited when they decided to put it out. I do really like this car. I always like the way these Mercury Cougars looked, and it's pretty good. Um, graphics on it, a little off center here in the on the wheel well. It's all right. It's also got a little bit of that green light lean to it, where it's lower on this side than it is on this side. For some reason, that happens a lot with green light. I'm not really sure what the deal is with that, but there you have it. And then, lastly, we got this from the Anniversary Series, 1991 GMC Sonoma with 1920 Indian Scout. And there that is. Go ahead and open up that guy. I have one version of this casting already. This is the second one I'm adding. There's a bunch of versions of this that just came out. The reason why I picked this one is because it came with the motorcycle. And the motorcycle's got a little stand, which is kind of neat. And I wonder if this, does this fit in the bed of the truck? No. Does it fit? It should fit, like, what, on the back of the truck? Is that how it's supposed to go? Not really sure. But pretty cool. So this casting's pretty neat. It's cool that it comes with a little bike accessory. That is kind of a neat thing. Um, this thing is hitched. I don't think the hood opens on this. No, it does not. And what's the number here on the bottom? We get uh, 8641. Pretty neat. And yeah, pretty cool. Little Indian motorcycle, pretty detailed there. Doesn't fit in the back of the bed of this truck, but it probably does in some of the castings. And this little motorcycle stand thing is kind of kind of a neat add as well. I think it is just supposed to go right on the hitch like that. 
And it's supposed to sit in like that. That's pretty cool. All right. Now, let's get into some auto world. Well, let's actually start with giant lighting. Might as well tell the story of the casting, starting with this. All right, so this is the casting in question, the 2011 Chevy Camaro. This, of course, is the green light, or not green light, Johnny Lightning version um, in a zinger format, which we have looked at, I think, in the last weekly episode. I opened up one of these. I did miss the fact that it's got an opening hood. We'll check that out on this one. And it's in like a white lightning, kind of pearl white. But this is not a white lightning at all. And it comes with this little card here, Wildcat. There's the other stuff in the... It's a really great series, by the way. This is a particular uh, Street Freaks release. So let's check out the opening hood. Let me get it open. There we go. Lots of detail under there, too. That's pretty awesome. Uh, this does have inserted uh, headlights. These are little plastic pieces inside of here. Painted taillights. And that's going to come into play in a moment. I've talked about this in the past, sort of, but we're going to kind of get in the weeds on it a little bit here. So this, of course, is the zingerized Johnny Lightning version of the tooling. Now, I want to go and get into opening up this ultra red before we can really talk about this and put this in perspective a vehicle that we do need to look at that's not the camaro um is this what is this well this is an auto world 164 scale dodge challenger it is the from the true elliot line at the true limited edition line now i've talked about this line in past weekly episodes as well as I've added these to the collection. These are really, really cool. Uh, these differ from your standard auto world in the fact that they are screwed together. There's screws holding them together. Um, there's a little bit of extra detail down here. Typically, these are going to have, or these particular, this is the only casting, by the way, that ever came out in that line. It came out in a few different colors. Um, it's got Inserted details for the taillights and inserted details for the headlights. It's got a detailed engine bay, of course, as well. And, you know, rubber tires, all that good stuff that's kind of typical of, you know, of Auto World. So you've got metal base, you know, metal body, all that good stuff. The thing that kind of sets it apart from, you know, your Auto World premium design is that it's got these inserted details for both uh, taillights and headlights. So what's interesting about this model here is that this particular version of this Camaro also not only does it have inserted headlights, it also has inserted taillights. So, and we just showed you, I just showed you this Zinger casting. As you can see, the taillights are not an inserted piece. So what is the deal? Okay, well, the deal is, is that this casting originally, I believe, I don't think I've ever confirmed it really, but originally was supposed to be a true LE casting. Uh, the tooling number, is there a tooling number on the bottom of this? I think there is. And it is 164-001. So this is the first 164 scale Auto World tooling. And I believe our Camaro is 002. And yes, it is. The other thing we can look at is production dates. So I've got... Let's see, this one was produced, this will put it in perspective. It looks like this was produced in 2011. So very, very early in Audi, Auto World 164 scale um, stuff. So we're going to take a look here. So I've got a few versions of this car we're going to peek at before we open up this one. Here is your standard version A. This is painted taillight, inserted headlight. We have a date of... 2014 date of March. You can see it's tooling number two. See it's still screwed together. But no inserted taillights. Now we got this one. This one was 2014 in also March. March 31st. Actually same date code as this one. Or same date on the bottom. Production date we're going to assume. Inserted headlights. Painted taillights. Pretty much the same. Uh, the difference between these two, this one has black seats. This one has 
red seats. I don't know if you can see in there very well. Probably not. There you go. You get a glimpse of the red right there. Red seats, black seats. Okay. Now I've got this one. This is an Auto World Ultra Red, of course. Painted taillights, inserted headlights, production date of March 31st, 2014. Screwed together, of course, as well. Um, very nice looking ultra red. Very cool. Black seats. And we got this ultra red. We have painted taillights, inserted headlights, March 31st, 2014. Screwed together, of course. Uh, we got some differences here, though. This one has red seats and just full full disclosure before someone points this out yes the screw that's holding this together is somewhat stripped that could possibly lead you to believe that someone took this apart and put in that red seat interior because supposedly the red seat version of this ultra red is rarer than the black seat version i don't know if that's true or not um, however, I know this one's legit because I actually opened it up. Um, this, I did actually cut this out of a package. It was not resealed. It was not anything like that. It's legit. Uh, just when it was put together, the screw got a little bit stripped. So no, this was not a custom job or whatever. But as you can see right now, we have two different variations of this ultra red, one with black seats, one with red seats. So, you know, logically you would think this would have been found on a version B card and this one would have been found on the version A card. I don't know. There's no way to know that because they didn't have different versions for the cards at that time. So it was impossible. There is no version A, version B card. All right, now, moving on. And we're still, all these so far have that March 31st, 2014 production date. Um, now we got this guy. So this is the same as this, except we got a little bit of a difference. So we have inserted headlights. Um, and that includes the little like fog lights underneath here. And I don't know if I, did I look at that on the zinger? Where's the zinger? Yeah, the zinger does have those in, that inserted piece right there too. Um, and then, but now we've got inserted taillights as well see that you can see it much better on the gray one than you can the red one so hopefully you can see it you can tell because they're much darker but it is an inserted plastic piece or pieces as opposed to being painted you can also kind of tell because the kind of like the curve that surrounds the uh, tail light is slightly different so you can tell these are different now let's take a look at the date and you can see the date is from the year prior. It is 6-15-2013. Screwed together, of course. So this is an older version of this. Now they released, they re-released these. These did not have production numbers. So they did release this casting and they, they kept this release going for quite a few runs. So I don't know if it was just the first run that had the inserted details and then they stopped or not. I'm not sure. Um, but what we do know is that this was ran 6-15-2013, and it has inserted taillights. All right, next is this red one. So again, inserted taillights, inserted headlights. So we're going to assume our date is going to be 2013, and it is, but it's October 2013. So version A, version B, so they must have produced this first. Produced these second, and then started the subsequent ones. They lost the inserted taillights and moved them to painted. So hopefully you guys find that interesting. So what is this guy? Well, you can probably guess, since we got painted taillights here, black seats. Painted taillights here, red seats. This one's got black seats, and it's got the inserted taillights. Or what appears to be here in the package. So we're gonna go ahead and free the piece on this guy. We'll open it up. Let's take a look at the production date. There's no way to see it down below. Now, I don't know if these are more rare. I don't know what is more rare. You think it is because it's older. 
Um, but these are hard to shop for on eBay because a lot of times on eBay when you see this casting, nobody takes great pictures of it. Um, you can never see the back of the car very clearly. It's hard to tell in pictures if you have inserted taillights or not. It's also hard to tell if it's got the red seats or not. Um, it's just something that's difficult to see in eBay photos. So I was lucky today. Donovan had one of these on his table and I made him an offer and he took it. Uh, so I got this for, I think, a pretty good price. It's just, it's hard to say what these things are worth because um, you just don't know. Because it's just you, it, when they pop up, it's like I said, you, it's hard to tell. But my guess is they're from the first few production runs. So it's either going to be from the run that happened in, uh, what was it, June of 2013 or possibly the one in October of 2013. And we're going to take a look and see here. So you can see inserted taillights. Inserted headlights and our oh, black black seats and 6-15-2013. So the one in June of 2013. Okay, hopefully you guys found that interesting. Maybe you didn't. That's okay if you did not. But it's a great ultra red. It's awesome. I've got three different versions of it. And you know, side by side by side. Other than that red seat poking out. You probably would never know the difference. I mean, if we turn them around, I think it's kind of easy to tell that these are painted and that, you know, you can tell that those are darker. But to layman, you know, it could probably just look like that was more paint was put in there or a darker paint. But no, it's actually an inserted taillight. Okay. That's that. Thanks for nerding out with me for a good 10 minutes, 11 minutes just on that casting, but I'm very happy to add that to my collection. All right, and with that, that's going to be the end of this episode. Thank you guys very much for watching another Diecast Weekly episode. Hopefully you enjoyed this one, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Hopefully I have some cool stuff to show you. Bye now.